A relationship with the right referral partner could be a game changer for any B2B company. So what if you could reverse engineer these relationships at a moment's notice? Start a podcast, invite potential referral partners to be guests on your show, and grow your referral network faster than ever. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm James Carberry. And I'm Jonathan Green. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. We are here today with Tyler Farnsworth. He is the Managing Director at August United. Tyler, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, James? I am wonderful. So uh, if you have been listening to the show for a while, you know that uh, I did an episode a few weeks ago about Tyler and his session at CTA Comp. He talked about influencer marketing and uh, it was such a good talk. Jonathan and I both loved it so much that I figured I would reach out to Tyler and see uh, see if we could have him on the show to actually do an interview with him. So, so Tyler, really appreciate your time today. I would love for our listeners to understand really why you are the guy to be talking about influencer marketing. And so could you explain just a little bit about August United and what you and your team are up to over there? James, I appreciate the kind words. So let's talk a little bit about August United. We're a full service influencer marketing firm based in Phoenix, Arizona. And I know that terminology might sound a little bit strange. It's, it's been a bit more of an emerging tactic in the world of marketing over the last few years. Uh, and so really our, our goal is we come in and help organizations design their influencer marketing strategy and, and go all the way through execution and reporting of, of those strategies. I love it. So as we dive into this topic, we're going to be talking about influencer marketing as it relates specifically in the B2B world. And so as we dive into this and spend the rest of the interview talking about it, I'd love to kind of start with the why Tyler, so so why should the B2B marketer be considering influencer marketing? You bet. So he, he, there's a few things we think about. And when we look at influencer marketing in the space right now, we really saw it rise to prominence a few years back in the B2C world, in the consumer world in a big way, where we saw uh, consumer packaged good brands or beauty brands uh, really drive uh, this the growth of the, of the industry in a big way, mm. working with large scale YouTubers or folks on Instagram to discuss their product. Now, yes, we've seen that a lot. But the essence of influencer marketing is something that goes way before digital, right? Yep. Working with folks who have influential voices, who people trust, who people care about, their opinion. And so this isn't a, a new tactic in that sense. It's just the way that we deploy it now is a bit different. Okay. And even though the, the B2C world has kind of led in that space, we're seeing a lot of value in the B2B world. Uh, we know that that the buyer and the B2B buyer is also a consumer, is a consumer in the, in the B2C world as well. And they see the way that this space changes. They spend time on digital channels. They spend time on YouTube. They spend time on Facebook and on Instagram and on a lot of these places where these folks reside or where these folks reside. And, and so for that matter, there's a different approach, but definitely an important place for, for organizations to play to really get their uh, word out about their product. Got it. Got it. So as I heard you talk about it at CTA Conf, it just, it makes so much sense that of course, partnering with people that have the ear of, of your buyer and the trust that their audience has in them is something that you just cannot take lightly uh, because it's real. Like if, if I'm following, I don't know, there, Trish Bertuzzi, who's a thought leader in the sales development space. Well, she's got a ton of decision makers, sales development leaders, people that are, uh, you know, VP of sales. She has a lot of those type of people following her on LinkedIn, following her on Twitter. And for her to advocate for my product or service to her audience, I just, I don't think that can be overstated and I'm bought in, but to kind of get beyond the why, let's say, okay, people listening to this, they understand why influencer marketing uh, is so powerful. They want to start doing it, but I want to kind of take the next turn here and say, okay, what does the face of an influencer look like in a B2B context? Could you run with that for us for a bit, Tyler? Yeah, definitely. Let, and, and let me expound on that 
why just a, a tiny bit more. And I think you, you started keying in on that. But we as marketers are always looking for what are different and unique ways we can take to get in front of our buyer. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the world of content marketing has exploded, and we really talked a lot about, about that. And, there, and there's some great things out there, but there's also this <laughs> this noise, there's this incredible noise in the space, and, and we have to figure out ways to cut through. Mm-hmm. And us as the brand, we often feel we are the best voice. Yeah. Uh, and, and that can be true. We can be a really great voice, but the way that we're trusted can be a little bit different. And oftentimes people are wanting to hear from other voices in the space. And so this is where we've seen this uh, this tactic come uh, to bear fruit, where we can really identify and work with people who have the ear of our buyer. Mm. And so to go to your, uh, to your question around the face, uh, the, the face of a, of a B2B influencer is a bit different depending upon who you are, but there's a lot of uh, things that we can look at. And so you mentioned LinkedIn, you mentioned Twitter. Both of those platforms are outstanding places for uh, to identify and to work with with influencers in the B2B space. It is different than the B2C space. We still see a lot of value in YouTube as well. But LinkedIn in particular, we've been really excited about recently. Uh, the content just sticks around so much longer. The half-life or the lifespan of that content is so much longer than what we see in other spaces. So being able to work, identify and work with someone in that space to get content out is really huge. But that that face, there's a lot of things we look at. Uh, because you might say, okay, well, great. You know, like the, the, the individual you just brought up, James, it, let's say I want to work with that person, mm-hmm. uh, but they don't know about my product. Okay. Well, what, what do I do? And, and so yeah. there's some work to go there. Uh, obviously, the lowest hanging fruit are working to identify the people within your known network that have larger than average reach. So this is looking at things like your current Twitter following or people who are currently in your email list or in your known network that are influential people. That's the first place to start because likely they already are are, are obviously aware of you, but have some level of advocacy toward you. And in many cases, it's just, just takes having a good strategy and asking them to be a partner with you on some sort of campaign, even simplistic things. Uh, and, And there's a lot of things that we can look at from an activation standpoint. I mean, we talk about, you know, about podcasts like, you know, like this, if, if you or your organization runs something uh, akin to a podcast, you can invite someone that is a current advocate of your of your uh, product to jump on yeah. and to share some of their knowledge or their expertise or some of their experience with your product and how it's made their life or their business better. Mm. There's tactics like key quote graphics, and those can be very simple, especially if you create a, uh, a great template, but to where you're getting a key quote from an industry influencer on how your product helps them do their jobs better. Mm. And to go back and you say, okay, well, Tyler, that's great, but my product's brand new and no one's used it yet, or we're relatively small, or we don't know the folks in the space who we should be working with, or there's some really great people out there, but they haven't worked with us. What do we do then? Well, there, there's a few things you can do. You can look at the space that you're in and work with them to discuss wh- what their thoughts are about where the space is going. And so, for example, let's say you're in the B2B tech world. And I know that's, <laughs> that's a large world, but yep. it's, it's software. Yep. You're a, you, you run a, a SaaS platform. And let's say that uh, there's someone in, in that world that speaks about it and writes about it and talks about it a lot. Let's call it the, the IT security space. Okay. So you're in that space and there's someone who, who's knowledgeable in that space, talks about it, writes about it a lot. You can approach them and say, hey, we're putting together you know, a top 10 list going into 2018 of trends to think about in this space. We'd love to feature you on that on that list. Mm-hmm. And I know that may not be the craziest or the most groundbreaking or earth shaking uh, tactic, but it's things like that that start to get them to say, oh, OK, well, yeah. yeah, I'd like to lend my hand to that. And so tell me a little bit more about you. And, and it gets you into that path toward advocacy of your product. Got it. Got it. And so doing things like that, Tyler, kind of warming the relationship, you mentioning that's very aligned with something that I find myself talking to people a lot about, which is just this idea of adding value to them first before kind of going in with the right hook and asking them to 
be a full-blown advocate for your product or service by you featuring them in an article, be it for your blog or a publication you write for, that's tangible value for them. It's positioning them, continuing to position them as a thought leader in the space. It's an ego stroke, but it's also giving them additional reach, which is, you know, if they're, if they're a thought leader, they're always looking for opportunities to do that. And so by adding value first, you're allowing yourself to do that. So what would you say? What, you know, you, you reach out, you say, Hey, we want to mention you in this article, the 10 trends to be on the lookout for in 2018. As you begin to nurture that relationship, if, if that was kind of the way you initiated it, what are some things that brands can do kind of moving forward beyond that initial engagement to continue leveraging that thought leader's influence and, and, and reach? Yeah, and it depends on who they are in the space, but there's a lot of things that can be done. I think that you, you hit it on the on the head. I mean, inviting, for example, even what you're doing right now, and I think what you do on your podcast, inviting, for example, me onto the podcast to come chat with the audience, there's a really good likelihood that I, I then share this podcast on the uh-huh. back end, which is great. You know, and I think these things are the great, you know, are, are a great strategy. But going beyond, there's a lot of things that can be done. We in the past have worked with organizations to bring together a group of these thought leaders. So we invited them to come to the headquarters of that company. So we brought about 10 folks down to the headquarter, flew them in, had a, you know, had a bit of travel. It doesn't always have to be that way. You can do it virtually. But we had a think tank or a, a brainstorming session with <laughs> this really heavy hitter group around how not just how the industry is changing, but how their product could be taken to the next level. Mm. So kind of leverage that brain power of that collective group to help design both uh, product features. So we had product people in there, but then also marketing uh, approaches and campaign concepts around how they could take their product to the next level. And Super smart. It, it was awesome because those folks, even if they only had a, a, a small bit of experience with that company before, how do you think they think about yeah. that company after they leave? Yeah, now they're all in. And and I could even I, I don't know if this is something you guys did with them while they were there, but I would imagine there's there's probably some pretty great opportunities to create content uh yep. while they're there on site, you know, in a green room or or do some sort of you know, kind of vlog style video with all of these thought leaders being in your conference room, I would imagine you could probably put together a really quality video piece that, you know, puts your brand and and associates them with not just one influencer, but 10 influencers sitting around the table that all of those influencers would then go and share after the fact. So yeah, I I love that idea. That's not something that I, I had thought about before, but getting influencers bought in on, hey, how can we make our product better? How can we be better? And asking for their advice is super smart strategy. It's not always something you can do out of the gate because you do need to warm that relationship up. Yeah, there's other ways to do it too. If you are attending the same conference that a lot of these folks are, and you're inviting them to a day or a session before or after the conference, um, obviously aligning schedules, but there, there are ways to do it uh, to really get those folks together and. You know, something, and, and James, if you'd permit this, I, it's something I, f- I failed to talk about early on is really when you're looking at that face of the influencer, you have to ask a lot of questions of okay. your of yourself and of your team at the beginning to identify who the right folks are for you to work with. Okay. And a lot of these things that we look at are, are, are things that you, <laughs> you would look at in marketing in general, but you, you really look at, okay, who do we serve? Who is our customer? Having that, you know, that that real clarity around who they are, what are the things that they care about, you know, what drives them, what are those sorts of things, where do they get their knowledge, uh, where do they learn more to, about the type of product that we uh, that we offer, yeah, you know, who are the type of people that they would follow or could follow, and then that helps you to start getting to the place of of terms and key terms and people and, and the, the right kind of people that we know we could start looking at. And it's not always as direct or as distinct as you might think. Sometimes the umbrella is a bit larger mm. and you, you may say, okay, well, I'm an, I'm an industrial adhesive manufacturer, so I can only work with industrial adhesive influencers. Well, well, no, <laughs> you know, I mean, there are going to be some folks like that that exist, but the, the, the swath of quantity of those people are, are not, is not going to be huge, but let's look at some other things. Are there engineering 
influencers in general, mechanical engineering influencers that could make sense? Are there individuals who, who talk about the efficiency of running a plant or a manufacturing facility? I mean, you can really start going up a couple of layers and looking at uh, all of the people who are within our buyer cycle or our buyer chain and uh, who are the type of people that they might follow or might care about. And mapping those out, really asking yourself those critical questions, forcing yourself to to go down the path of right, you know, not sticking yourself in a silo, but just thinking outside the box a bit. I think, uh, yeah, makes makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. So this next piece, Tyler, and really this is where we're going to close out the interview. Uh, I'd love to talk about measurement. I, I know a lot of the marketers that I'm talking to, this is something that uh, that that they obviously care a whole lot about. So as someone is is implementing an influencer marketing strategy, how do they need to be thinking about measurement of the results on the back end? Yeah. So I, I like this. So there, there's obviously with any marketing tactic, there's a bit of investment whether it's investment of time, which is obviously money as well, uh, or a, an out, you know, an, an output of money as well. Uh, so you, you have to look at it. What are we getting out of this? And there's a lot of things that we can look at. By and large, influencer marketing is is a top of funnel tactic. Are there things that drive specific action? Absolutely. But I think that uh, you need to keep a focus of I'm trying to get in front of a large quantity of people who are my right kind of people Hmm. and do so in ideally a much more authentic way than if it was something coming directly from me as the organization. So just to set expectations, we look at it from that perspective, but there's a lot of things we do uh, and it depends on some of the tactics that you've taken. Uh, Certainly uh, we look at the quantity of content and the quality of content that's been created at some more traditional metrics like uh, impressions, uh, you know, the, 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 the quantity of people we were able to get in front of if it was a video piece of content, the views, those sorts of things. Uh But then there are some of the more tangible metrics. If we were sending people to a direct landing page that made sense from that influencer partnership, we track all kinds of things there, you know, from the quantity of clicks to the time on site to the actions taken on site. And you can get real specific in some of our clients will get real unique with these landing pages and have specific content from that influencer on that landing page Mm. so that it is more of a a congruent experience to where they came from this person's Twitter or this person's LinkedIn post. They clicked through and then they saw that same person's face with a quote and then a little bit more info on the product and some sort of lead capture or whatever that call to action is. And Playing around with that a bit has, has really proven out beneficial to a lot of our clients. From there, you can even take uh, the, those sort of assets and create paid media units. So whether we're doing some remarketing or retargeting to folks based upon them visiting that site uh, that have, again, visuals from the influencer that they know and, and trust – and with a call to action and, and just getting creative with a lot of that is really that next evolution of influencer marketing. Yeah. And so I know that, that there was, it was kind of wide there, but, but we look at a number of different things, measure a lot of those, those things in, and the reason why I haven't just gone straight to sales or straight to the conversion, we know that <laughs> that's the goal, right? right? But there's a lot of other things we have to look at in order to determine whether or not we're getting value out of this tactic. Got it. Um, really making sure that it's a part of that conversion funnel and uh, it's not necessarily going to be the silver bullet. That makes sense. Uh, Tyler, this has been fantastic. I, I think you've shared you've shared some things here that have definitely opened my eyes to uh, some different things that I hadn't thought about before. If there's somebody listening to this and they want to stay connected with you or they want to learn more about August United, what's the best way for them to go about doing both of those things? So uh, personally, uh, reach out on Twitter at Tyler Farnsworth, T-Y-L-E-R-F-A-R-N-S-W-O-R-T-H, uh, or directly at augustunited.com. There's a contact us form there, uh, or hello at augustunited.com, and we'd be happy to chat. Awesome, Tyler. With Again, thank you so much for your time today. This has been fantastic, so I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, James. Take care. If you're a B2B marketer, we want to feature you on sites like Huffington Post, Social Media Examiner, and Chief Marketer. Every week, we send out a question related to B2B marketing. We use the responses to those questions to fuel the content we write for really popular websites. So head over to sweetfishmedia.com backslash questions and sign up today. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.